Why are so many Christians so timid in sharing the gospel with their friends and neighbors? Why should we as Christians be fearless in our evangelism and outreach? We'll talk about it today on the program with my guest, Ray Comfort. Also, I'll be addressing the comments of President Trump on abortion. And finally, I'll give you a wrap up of our trip to New York college campuses. Welcome, everybody, to uh, Activist Radio here on the Mark Harrington Show. And you can pick up the program on all the popular podcasting platforms as well, as you can follow me on all the social media sites, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and all the rest. Uh, We appreciate you being on the program. And today I have as my guest Ray Comfort. And Ray is an apologist, speaker, and author of over 100 books, Everybody that listens to my program knows Ray. He's been on our show before. He's also the co-host of the TV program, Way of the Master. And Ray's got a new book out. We're going to be talking about that. Plus this new video called What Is It? has to deal with the pro-life issue. And Ray is also going to be leading a team to London, England to do evangelism. So we got a lot to cover today. Ray, thanks for being on the show. It's a joy to be here. Thank you. So, Ray, uh, I was interested in first talking about the new book. Uh, It's entitled So Many Lions, So Few Daniels. And what you address in the book is why is it that Christians are so timid in in, in evangelism, reaching out to uh, nonbelievers with the gospel of Jesus Christ? I'm intrigued by that because, of course, I think we, if we look at the church, we look at what's happening in North America, for that matter, the Western world, uh, we see a decline uh, in the influence of Christianity. And that has a lot to do with the fact that a lot of Christians are just not willing to go there. They don't want to press the issue or spread the gospel. Why is it that you, why did you write this book? First of all, what was the point? What's the purpose? Well, it's, it was inspired by atheists. Um, about a year ago, I saw a T-shirt <laughs> that said, too many Christians, not enough lions. And I thought, wow, <laughs> that's very culturally sens- sensitive. That's like saying too many Jews, not enough Nazi ovens, too many blacks, not enough lynching ropes. And I was mad. So I decided to write a book called So Many Lions, So Few Daniels, because we need the mm-hmm. boldness of a lion. We need men like Daniel, who are men of faith, uh, who will step up to the plate and say, look, this is we're, we're, we're here for such a time as this. God's given us weapons to use. We're involved in a warfare that's not a natural warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. And we just got to pick up those weapons and go running into battle because we're talking about the salvation of the lost. Nothing more precious than lives of human beings. And that's what we're called to seek and save. Amen. Well, we just got back from a university in Albany, New York, where protesters, almost up to 100 of them, we're shouting us down and all of that stuff in our pro-life uh, efforts. So we're, we're very accustomed to what's going on in culture. Uh, who are the lions that we're facing uh, in culture today? What, There's what a lot of them. The, the biggest lion is the fear of man. It's what dwells within us. If we can deal with that, then we're sweet. But there are other ones. There's, there's atheism. Atheism has is, is got to be the dumbest thing that's ever been invented. It's, it's It really is a, a modern phenomenon. There was not atheists like we see nowadays uh, many years ago uh, the bible only gives 11 words to atheists it's, uh, psalm 14 verse 1 the fool has said in his heart there's no god and then uh, it reiterates it repeats it in psalm 53 in case we didn't get the message an atheist is a fool someone who believes the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything that's insane to believe that nothing made flowers and birds and trees, the sun, the moon, the stars, the marvels, the human eye, puppies and kittens, seasons, fruits, all these things were made by nothing. That's what the atheist defaults to rather than acknowledge God's existence. You know, I'm up, uh, on our YouTube channel, you often see atheists suddenly become honest. I say to them, so you're an atheist? He says, yeah, I don't believe in God's existence. And I say, can you be honest with me? He says, yeah, can you be really honest with me? Okay, so this has got nothing to do with God and everything to do with the fact that you're looking at pornography and having sex with your gorgeous girlfriend. 
on my right. Mm -hmm. And you see mm -hmm. his mouth just suddenly go up at the edges. And he can't deny, he says, yeah, you're right. So everyone knows God exists. God's given light to every man. The invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And so every single human being knows of God's existence, but some deny him. Think of the prodigal son. He ran away to a far country. Why? Why didn't he just stay and do what he wanted to do under his father's nose? Well, Jesus gives us a little insight through the words of his brother. He wanted to spend his money on prostitutes. and He knew his father would frown on it, so he went to a far country. Atheism is a far country. That's all it is. They want to get away from God. They're like Adam who's hiding behind a bush because of their sin. Mm -hmm. What we've got to do is flush him out and say, hey, you've got to face God on Judgment Day. This is not a laughing matter. This is not something that can be trifled with. This is your life we're talking about. It's not just who you're going to marry or what you're going to do for a job. This is where you're going to spend eternity. So the issues are great, and we've got to overcome our fears of atheists being so-called intellectuals. They're not, and you can deal with them by moving away from their intellect, which is the place of argument, to their conscience, the knowledge of right and wrong. So on a YouTube channel, you'll, channel, you'll often see that, see that happen, and a contentious atheist suddenly becomes like a meek little kitten once you move to his conscience. He starts off as a roaring lion, and then he goes to a meek little kitten because his conscience is being addressed as Jesus did, if we see, as we see in Scripture. My guest is Ray Comfort. He's an author, speaker, and also the co-host of the TV program Way of the Master. There's a new uh, season coming out as well, coming soon. He's also written a lot of books. Uh, hey, Ray, I want to ask you this specifically. You see the uh, the transgender revolution, I might refer to it as, and how they are coming after Christians. Uh, a lot of times on college campuses, too, speakers are being shouted down. There's been violence and so forth. Uh, do you see them as one of the, the this group, if you will, as one of the lions that you speak about in your book? Yeah, transgenders are revolting. They are um, revolting against that which is right. And it really is just a, a sign, one of the last days, but two, of a nation losing the fear of God. Um, mm -hmm. You think back to the 1950s when America had a semblance of a fear of God. You know, Billy Graham was uh, preaching. People respected him. Uh, they uh, had a, a, a belief in the Ten Commandments. Most people believed they have to face God on Judgment Day. And when a nation loses the fear of God, anything goes. Someone who fears God won't lie to you, won't steal from you, won't kill you. But someone who's lost the fear of God will lie to you. They'll steal from you and they will kill you if they think they can get away with it. And that's why we have mass shootings. Shooting. So many people say, what is the common de denominator for these mass shootings across the country? School shootings. Well, the common denominator is people have lost the fear of God. They think they're primates because they've been taught this in school. The average university student really believes he's a talking primate. He wasn't made in the image of God with a moral responsibility uh, to stand before God on judgment day. So he thinks as a primate, it's all about survival of the fittest. I'm fit, you're not, you go, you're weak. And that's the mentality of so many people, and we see it in this whole transgender thing. Again, uh, Ray Comfort's my guest. You can pick up the book by going to livingwaters.com. That's livingwaters.com. And the title of the book is So Many Lions, So Few Daniels. Uh, Ray Comfort. Uh, Ray, I want to transition quickly. We were talking off uh, before the program you're going to be uh, leading a team to London, England to uh, to do some witnessing, some evangelism. Sounds uh, sounds like a good time. I love London, a beautiful uh, city. I've visited there many times, but uh, I've never done evangelism there. Uh, very strong Muslim presence in that country. Uh, tell us what you're up to. Yeah, about six months ago, I began thinking about the coronation of King Charles and thought, Boy, during that service, he's going to reach out his hand, put it on a Bible in front of an audience of hundreds of millions around the world and swear to uphold the biblical truth of salvation by grace through faith without works. He's going to carry a, a, an orb, a globe with a cross on the top, which speaks of symbolically of the reign of Jesus Christ over the earth. He's going to be given a number of swords, two of which are a sharp sword, the sword of justice, a blunt sword, the sword of mercy. Uh, which we see in the gospel, the sword of justice is the 
day of judgment when he may, looses the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. So there are actually about 10 things that, he gonna, is he, that he's going to do that is symbolic of the gospel that we live for and preach. And so I thought, boy, it'd be great to get, to get a gospel track printed, something like that, <laughs> with the gospel on the back, that we could give out to the millions of the lining of the streets of London. This wouldn't be an endorsement of Charles. He's obviously an adulterer and he's not godly. Uh, but like uh, Paul in the book of uh, Acts, I think Acts chapter 17 in, in Athens, he actually, when he spoke to his hearers, quoted Greek poets. This is godless probably fornicating, blasphemous, idolatrous Greek poets. What did he do that for? Well, he just wanted a bridge to reach his hearers. He knew they would listen if he quoted Greek poets. And we know we've got the ear of the ungodly when we give them something that looks like memorabilia, that looks like one of their 50 pound bills. So I made a video explaining all this to my team. And just after I sent it to them, I got an email from a gentleman. He said, what are you working on? So I sent him the video and he sent the ministry $200,000. Send the video to someone else, they sent $50,000. Send it to someone else, they sent $100,000. So we got 3 million tracks printed initially and told people we're giving them away and we'll pay for the shipping for the tracks. You don't have to pay for them to Canada, United States, Great Britain, uh, Europe, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, Australia, New Zealand. We'll pay for the shipping and the tracks are free. So many went out that we actually ended up printing 16 million and it's now not just 2,000 people that are going to give out these tracks is actually 19,000 people leading up the day before and the day of the mm. coronation they're going to be giving out these tracks so people can get their free tracks with free shipping you've got to be quick because there's only a million left uh, you've got to uh, just go to livingwaters.com forward slash London and Mark, there's never been an opportunity like this where the whole secular media are going to go alive and watch this church service. The world's going to church. They're going to hear about God and Jesus, the Bible, faith. Um, and so this is an opportunity that's unprecedented. And I, as I said, it's not just millions, but hundreds of millions around the world are going to be tuning into this church service. So this is an, an, uh, an opportunity we've never seen before in the history of the earth history of the world sounds like it sounds like it what, what, what are the dates on that uh, uh he's being crowned on the 6th of may Sixth so of we've may got a reception in london up. where i think about two thousand christians from england are going to the reception or going to london plus 500 from the u.s are flying across to wow. give out these tracks and so That's we awesome. are super excited uh you said i'm leading a team i won't be going uh, they'll be sending a video of me over a live video live streaming gotcha. Uh, because at my age, uh, things aren't that simple. My wife gets a little dizzy, <laughs> nothing serious, but I don't I like to leave her alone for a week with a dumb dog because that's what would happen. <laughs> um, I so, understand. Well, if it weren't for your inspiration or the Holy Spirit's inspiration, this wouldn't be happening. So I guess in that way you are leading it. But uh, yeah, so friends, you can go to livingwaters.com slash London to find out about the trip there to uh, the uh, to the United Kingdom. One All other right, thing, I, Mark, one other thing before we, close, we are live streaming the outreach through our studios in California. Super. So people can go to our YouTube channel that night. We're getting up at 2 a.m. because the silly time difference and we're live right. streaming it for about three or four hours, maybe longer. And Answers in Genesis are live streaming the same live stream on their channel at the same time. So the Christians around the world can contact us through the live chats and be praying for this outreach at the same time or life, which is wonderful. All right. Like I, I want to finish up with this new video or movie that you're putting out, which is called, what is it? It got my interest because we're a pro-life organization an activist organization. We travel to college campuses and um, this, this movie that you're putting out called, what is it? I watched the trailer. We're going to play a little clip from it. But uh, what I found very interesting is that you went out with it and it wasn't you, but it was one of your colleagues went out with a clipboard asking if people would sign a petition supporting late term abortion or maybe. No, it was abortion after birth or after birth abortions or something of that nature. So go ahead and play this. This clip's about 30 seconds. This is of the uh, the trailer uh, on um, livingwaters.com called What Is It? What Is It? Go ahead and play the clip. 
I'm going to see if students are willing to sign a petition to legalize post-birth abortion. Hey, Chief, you want to sign a petition to legalize late-term abortion? Uh, sure. It's, it's after the child's actually been born. It's within the first 30 days is the idea, is the concept. Okay, fair but, enough, but, but for the option. At the end of the day, it's always going to be the woman's choice. This isn't politics. This is common sense. There are only four differences between the pre-born and the newborn, and none of them define our value as human beings. Is getting an abortion the same as removing one's fingernails or removing a lung? It's a crime to kill an eagle's egg. Yet if a woman decides to kill her own child, we call her brave. I'm, I'm rethinking my pro, my pro-choice thing. Kathy, would you kill it? Would I kill what? What? Would you kill it? Kill what? Kill it? Kill. What is it? You should be able to have an abortion we're in America, right? Well, of course, this comes on the heels of your very popular uh, movie called 180. And all of my listeners and viewers would be familiar with that, where you go on to college campuses and, and you watch students change from being pro-abortion to pro-life right before their eyes. This is kind of a follow up to that. I love the question. What is it? Because that really is the issue, is it not? If they're human, they're made in the image of God. That's where we derive our value. And you also uh, use the uh, sled uh, argument, which is the issue where he talks about the four differences between born children and unborn children are size, level of development, environment, and dependency. Uh, tell us a little bit more about this, uh, uh, Ray, and why you guys felt it was important to produce the movie. Well, to say we're horrified by abortion is an understatement. It's it's just it's unbelievable uh, to think that human beings would kill their own offspring. I mean, right. just it's horrific. It's like mm -hmm. living in Nazi Germany. So we want to do everything we can. Uh, Mark Spence is pregnant with this issue. The guy is absolutely brilliant. Um, I love him. He's traveled with me for many years, and I've seen an incredible maturity in him uh, spiritually. But he is totally gifted when it comes to the pro-life issue, just in answering questions and being quick. But what thrills me more than anything else about Mark is he's got a grip on salt and light. You know, we can look mm -hmm. at the horror of abortion and go running into battle and saying, we're going to outlaw this, and so we should. Uh, but if we don't go with the light of the gospel, we're going to leave the world in darkness. And yeah. so it's essential to have that balance, like two wings of a plane, because we don't want to talk people out of abortion and see them go to hell. We want to talk people out of sin, see them saved. And in the train of that, they love life. They want to please God. So yeah. that's what this this uh, movie is about. It's very well produced. It's uh, fast moving. And once you stop, I mean, once you start watching it, it's uh, it's a roller coaster of emotions. One minute you'll be laughing, next minute you'll be crying because it's mm -hmm. so moving, so fast moving and so moving emotionally. Um, and they can see the details at livingwaters.com. Well, we are definitely kindred spirits in the approach that you can talk all you want about abortion, but if you don't get to the heart of the issue, which is the relationship with Jesus Christ, we're missing the mark. So we are definitely in like mind with you on that. Uh, Ray, if you would, let, wrap it up here. We've got this new book, uh, So Many Lions, So Few Daniels. You're going to London. You've got this pro-life video, a movie coming out. If you would, leave our listeners and viewers with some parting words and a call to action. Yeah, there's a, there's a call to action that, that people can actually do. Often people say to me when they watch our YouTube channel, which has had 240 million views, which blows us wow. away, that we have such access into the world with the gospel. Go back 50, 60 years with the big crusades that take two years to get together. It's like herding cats to get churches to combine. Cost millions of dollars, and most of the people in there were churchgoers or Christians anyway. But here we have this thing where we push a button, and we literally speak to millions. And often I'll see in the YouTube uh, comments, oh, I wish you could talk to my mother-in-law. Well, I can. Just send our videos to them. It's got share button. Click the share button. Don't say, mother-in-law, watch this. Say, mom, I'd like to know what you think of this. And saying that, you're not telling her what to do. You're asking for her opinion. You're appealing to her ego, and she's more likely to watch it. So if you want the gospel preached to the ungodly, please use, use the share button on our YouTube channel. Totally free. And you can reach this world with the gospel in a wonderful way by just saying to people, love to know what you think of this. Well, we love your work here. And I remember, I think it was maybe two decades ago, I first heard your uh, 
your talk on um, Hell's Best Kept Secrets, which I think is one of the most powerful uh, presentations of why the gospel is necessary and the law of God in combination to drive people to Jesus. So my guest has been Ray Comfort with Living Waters. You can go to livingwaters.com. You can check out the trailer on his new movie, uh, What Is It? You can also pick up the book, So Many Lions, So Few, so few Daniels, and make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel and share the uh, videos with those you are seeking to reach for Jesus Christ. Ray, thanks for being on the program. Oh, thank you, Mark. It's been a joy. You've been listening to Radioactives here on the Mark Carrington Show. God bless you. God bless America. And remember, America, to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. For more information on how to make a difference for the cause of life, liberty, and justice, go to createdequal.org. To follow Mark, go to markharringtonshow.com. Be sure to tune in next time for your marching orders in the culture war.